business confidence in the South African manufacturing sector remains fragile. This according to the latest survey by the Manufacturing Circle and Industry Representative Group. Job losses in the manufacturing sector continued in the second quarter, while RAND volatility is a concern and exports are easing. For more, we are joined in studio by Kunrat Besagnot, Executive Director of the Manufacturing Circle. Welcome, Kunrat. Thank you. Good evening. So this seems to be a regular survey that you, you run. We already know that the sector is fragile. We've got the PMI numbers and mm. it's contracting, job losses continue. What do you think lies at the heart of the problem? Look, uh, there are a number of problems that have been there for, for quite a while. I mean, a cost push is quite a, quite a bit of an uh, issue in general. Uh, margins are under huge pressure uh, because of that reason. There electricity are, prices? Yeah, what else? well, electricity prices have gone up uh, for over 170% um, uh, over the last couple of years. While in some of our competitive markets, like uh, Brazil and India, electricity prices have actually been um, dropping um, somewhat. So it puts us in a very difficult position. Um, added to that, there is obviously, of course, the uh, domestic and um, uh, international markets where demand is slowing. And uh, uh, you find uh, exporters, huge uh, manufacturing countries such as China, that have to find a, a place for, for their uh, manufactured goods to go. And uh, we find a lot of that coming into our market um, at, at usually incentivized rates. Uh, making it very difficult for, for our manufacturers in the domestic market, which is still very important to them. You haven't mentioned the RAND yet. Manufacturers are always complaining about the RAND. I'm not sure you want it stronger, weaker, stable. Yes, well, they do. There's also a good reason why I'm not mentioning that, because uh, I've got guys that are very, uh, very uh, yeah. waxed on the topic. Chris and is uh, warming <laughs> up on <this. laughs> He's And our, our technical specialist on that topic is uh, Dr. Raj Biri, and he's not yet to speak about it. But yes, it is true. I mean, they find uh, that a weaker RAND does support them. Certainly they feel, I mean, uh, the, the research that Pan-African uh, Investment Research Services have done for us have indicated that between 820 and 860 is, is more ideal um, and, and kept constantly so over, over a period. Of course um, inflation would go up if that were to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to interrupt you and get Chris to give his yeah. views. I think we're being too polite about this, oh. to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, as Conrad was saying, a lot of imported goods with incentives, you know, uh, it's unfair to help yeah. we don't talk about the disincentives to actually mm. manufacture in South Africa we, we actually impose a huge number of costs on doing business in this country that are imposed nowhere else in the world um, so that's the first problem um, the second problem is that the costs are being driven up by quite militant unions so that's um, uh, in, in other words you're getting uh, wage increases that are not productivity related um, and uh, and that means that we're going backwards as far as the com competitiveness is concerned. What is not well understood is how much of our manufacturing industry is actually import-driven growth. And I know uh, manufacturers don't like to talk about it. When you get a weak rand, we never ever see a benefit um, fr from a weak currency. And the reason is a lot of our our, our, our manufacturing was never set up as an export industry. It was actually set up as an import uh, driven growth. Right. So Kunrad, that goes back to the old days when we had this lager economy. Yes, yes. And this goes back but to the point how competitive are we? So we, we yeah. seem to be blaming everything else, but what about the industry itself? And then also the point Chris makes, is government creating this enabling mm. environment for you? Look, uh, uh, sure, there is that argument. In certain instances, there are manufacturers that, that should have invested at a certain time in competitiveness that haven't and now uh, are, are reaping the, the benefits but, of it. But, but, uh, you know. but there's also uh, uh, industries where uh, guys are competitive as anybody else and where the, the, the actual processes are pretty much standardized throughout the world. Um, and if that is the case, um, the, the perception from their side is, is certainly that a stronger and makes it more difficult for them to compete over time. Mark, if you had to look in the industrial sector, those that, that are important here, I'm thinking ACI, etc. So these issues that Gunnarod highlighted, are they a serious constraint in your investment decision making and making them less attractive? Yeah, very much. I mean, the regulatory framework is, is a huge consideration. The fact that you're hearing talk of strategic nationalization, that, that you know, obviously makes corporate reticent to, to, to take some cash off their balance sheets and invest in more productive capacity. You know, then you, you do have this legislation that makes it very difficult to fire inept workers, you know, so productivity does continue to fall. At the same time, from electricity as well as a water point of view, it's very difficult for industry to expand. There isn't excess capacity in, in, in water or in electricity. 
So when you add those things together, then you throw in the skill shortage, you know, the lack of, you know, we've got lots of people that are, that are brilliant at managing, but we don't have a lot of engineers that are good at actually going out and building things. And that's where the, there's not a lot of technical skills, and that's where the worry comes in. So, I mean, you, you, you know, from my point of view, and, 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 I, and I completely agree that all these things, you know, but they come into play. But when you take a look at what you can do with capital, capital always go, in theory, to where it is best, you know, best served, where the best capital returns are. It opportunity does. and, and need. And if you, if you can't invest locally at a, at a decent return on equity, then you see the likes of ShopRite, et cetera, they all look north and they start investing offshore. And yet, Kunrad, more than 60% of those surveyed for your second quarter say they saw more profits. Yes, but it's also a situation that's, um, that's starting to flatten out and, and move, move more towards, uh, I mean, we see, we see uh, yes, there may be less people that, that say that the, the, uh, the outlook over the next two years is poor, but uh, there are much less of them that think it's stable and so on. So the, the, the movements are complex. It is a Basically, we've got a high degree of policy uncertainty. And when it comes to investment, okay, your three major wealth producing sectors in this economy, which is manufacturing, mining and agriculture, as the start of your value chain, are getting what I call shortened investment timelines. Because when you have policy uncertainty and you don't know how it's going to actually pan out, and it's not as if that you've got the po policy certainty where it may be, there could be a good outcome or there could be a bad outcome. Sometimes it's just bad. Yes. The mining industry is just bad. Okay, um, You're not going to get the investment that, Chris, that you actually implied. need. No, exactly. You're Can not going to get the final investment. Final brief word from you. What are the policy implications? Look, uh, we would definitely like to see that there's more institutional alignment as far as our trade uh, administration is concerned. That would certainly help quite a bit. We want there to be openness on the, on the conversation around monetary policy, which we certainly find. It's just what to do about it. That's the complex part of it. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if that along with the cost push in the country could be addressed in, in certain ways, but in a lot of the cases it, it depends on people getting out of the way yes. rather than mm. intervening more. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, <laughs> everyone <laughs> agrees with you. And, and we should, you know, listen a bit, and then a standing ovation to like a royal cause who stands up and says this is due, you know, leadership from the top is not making right. life easy Mar for business Marxist planning. Marxist clowns, you know, how else can you <laughs> describe it?